And that is so wrong, you just cannot believe it. So one of the things we found, which was really mind-boggling to me, was that you could make a case that the probability that a company will use a test that predicts performance, the, pro the probability that they will use the test is inversely related to the accuracy of the test, which basically means that the less accurate tests are easier to sell. And you think, well, why the hell would that be? Why in the, how in the world would it possibly be that corporations would rather buy tests that don't work than tests that do work? And that, that is what they do, because really what they do buy is the Myers-Briggs, right? That sells about a, a million units a year. And the Myers-Briggs has zero predictive utility with regards to performance prediction. So why do people use it? Oh, well, here's one reason. It doesn't hurt anybody's feelings. Everybody wins, right? And so then you think, well, do corporations really care whether or not everybody wins when they're being tested? And the answer to that is yes, much more often than you would think. So, so we hit all sorts of barriers, that was one. Um, the problem with tests that work is that most of the people who take them don't do very well on them. And then the other problem is, is that people, ha people aren't good at statistical reasoning at all. They're really, really bad at it. And so, for example, they don't know the difference between a percentage and a percentile. Myers-Briggs personality test. Yes, it's old. It isn't psychometrically valid. It wasn't derived by factor analytic techniques. It should be replaced by the big five or the big five aspect scale, which you can use if you go to understandmyself.com. We've put it online for people to use and to generate a personality report. Um, Myers and Briggs attempted to make a questionnaire predicated on Jungian presuppositions, and perhaps they did a fine job for the 1930s, but that was a long time ago, and there weren't any powerful computational devices of the kind that were necessary to sort out the structure of personality properly, which we've managed to do since about 1960 onward. So now, the Myers-Briggs is a perfectly useful tool if what you want to do is get people to talk about the fact that there are individual differences in personality. And corporations love it because no one gets offended by it because everyone wins. But if you want a personality test that actually tells you who you are, that's valid and reliable, then you use the big five. And, and that's that. And so I would say the Myers-Briggs should be relegated to the dustbins of the past because it's a defunct and archaic instrument and it, it's no longer properly valid. And so... Um, that's that.